This video cast we're going to look at veterinary medicines because pharmacists working in registered premises are actually authorised to supply veterinary medicines for use in animals um, where there's a valid prescription but also um, work for retail sale. So earlier um, veterinary medicines regulations, they were previously covered within the Medicines Act 1968, but now they've now been replaced by the annual veterinary reg regulations. Um, the Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, otherwise known as DEFRA, proposed to update these, um, these regulations annually. And the Veterinary Products Committee provides scientific advice on veterinary medicines uh, requested by Secretary of State or DEFRA and they'll have functions specified in the regulations around this. Now the annual veterinary regulations they specify that a veterinary medicinal product is any substance or combination of substances presented as having properties for treating or preventing disease in animals or they can be considered as any substance or combination of substances which may be used or administered to animals with a view to restore, correct, modify uh, physiological functions by exerting a pharmacological, immunological or metabolic action or by making a medical diagnosis. So it's really all encompassing there. The regulations also stipulate what an animal means. Um, so an animal is something other than a man and it includes birds, reptiles, fish, mollusks, crustacea and bees. There are specific offences um, against the regulations. So the offences include placing a vet medicinal product upon the market if it doesn't have a marketing authorization granted by the Secretary of State. Another offence is to administer a veterinary medicinal product to an animal unless the product has a marketing authorization authorising its administration in the UK. Um, it also has to be administered in accordance with Schedule 4 to the regulations, so specific requirements that have to be met. It's also an offence to supply a veterinary medicinal product that's past expiry date. Um, and it's an offence to supply a medicinal product authorised for human use for administration to an animal other than in, cord in accordance with a prescription given by a veterinary surgeon for administration under the cascade. So you can only supply a medicinal product for animal use if it has a marketing authorisation and you cannot supply a human product, medicinal product, unless it's under um, the cascade as written by a veterinary surgeon. Similar to the human medicines, there are classes of veterinary medicinal products. We've got the POM-V. They are prescription-only uh, medicines that can only be prescribed by a veterinary surgeon. Um, they can be supplied by a veterinary surgeon or pharmacist with a revision prescription. You've got the POM-VPS. Now, that's a prescription-only medicine that can be prescribed and supplied by a veterinary surgeon, a pharmacist, or a suitably qualified person with an oral or written prescription. A written prescription is only required if the supplier is not the prescriber, okay? And then we have um, the NFA, VPS. So that's a category of medicine for non-food animals that can be supplied by a veterinary surgeon, a pharmacist, or suitably qualified person, and a written prescription is not required. Then we have a VM, GSL. That's an authorised veterinary medicine that is available for GSL, for general sales uh, list. Then we have exempt medicines under the small animal exemption scheme. That's where there is an unlicensed veterinary medicine that doesn't require marketing authorization because it meets criteria laid out in this particular scheme. Then we have unauthorized veterinary medicine. These are unlicensed medicines. Uh, they don't have a marketing authorization and they're not eligible for exemption under the SAES. Um, they can only be prescribed by a veterinary surgeon under the cascade and they can include human medicines um, that can be used for animals. Now thinking about wholesale supply, only holders of a marketing authorization or the holder of a marketing, um, sorry, a marketing authorization or a holder of a manufacturing authorization or the holder of a wholesale dealer's authorization can supply veterinary medicinal products by wholesale or be in possession of it for that purpose. So those specific authorizations are required um, for supply of veterinary medicinal products. Veterinary medicinal products can only be supplied to a person who may supply veterinary medicinal products either by wholesale or by retail. If the supply is made by a suitably qualified person, then the supply must be made to them on that person's approved premises. That needs to be a requirement. 
A wholesale dealer can break open any package other than the immediate package of a veterinary medicinal product. Where a veterinary medicinal product is supplied as a retail supply, um, that person making the supply must advise on the safe administration of the product. They, can all, they must also advise on any warning or contraindications uh, that's either on the label or on the packaging to allow the product to be used appropriately. They must also be satisfied that the person who's going to use the product is competent to do so and they intend to use it safely and to use it also for the purpose it's intended for. There are prescription requirements for PON-Vs. Um, now, initially, a veterinary surgeon prescribing a veterinary product classified as a PON-V must carry out a clinical assessment of the animal, um, and the animal must be under their care. If they don't carry out this initial procedure, then it's actually an offence. It's also an offence to prescribe more than the minimum amount of the product required for the treatment. Now, the prescription that they um, issue, it can be oral or it can be written. So the person supplying the product can only supply the product specified on the prescription. They must ensure the supply is only made to the person named on the prescription and they must take reasonable steps to ensure the prescription has been written and signed by the person who's entitled to prescribe it. So looking at the actual form, the actual prescription, what needs to be on there. So again, you see similarities to the human private prescriptions. So we have the name, address, telephone number, qualification and signature of the prescriber. You need to have the name and address of the owner of the animal. You need to have identification and species of the animal and its address if it's different to the owner's. You need to have the date. Now the validity of these prescriptions is for six months or it can be shorter if it's indicated by the prescriber. If the prescription is repeatable, all supplies must be made within six months or shorter if indicated. Now if this prescription is for a controlled drug, it's only valid for 28 days. For the medicine, you need to have the name of the medicine, the quantity, the dose and administration instructions. As directed in this case is not acceptable, it needs to be very specific. It needs to have any necessary warnings and if relevant, the withdrawal period, which means any time that must lapse before the medicine is used and when the animal can be used as a food itself. Where appropriate, a statement highlighting that the medicine is prescribed under the veterinary cascade needs to be on the prescription. If the medicine is a Schedule 2 or Schedule 3 drug, it's a control drug, then the declaration on the prescription needs to include the item has been prescribed for an animal or herd under the care of the veterinarian. And the usual controlled drug prescription requirements apply. So the name and quantity, um, the name, sorry, the quantity of the medication in words and figures. If the prescription is repeatable, then the number of times that it can be repeated also needs to be on the prescription. The veterinary cascade, which I've now mentioned a few times, is um, a process which, under which a prescriber can prescribe medicines that don't necessarily have a marketing authorization for use in animals. So for veterinary medicine, um, it, ha it should have a UK mar marketing authorization to allow it to be prescribed and supplied. Um, and it allows that medicine to be um, clinically appropriate um, for use in the animal. Now, a cascade exemption allows supply of medicines that are not licensed for animals. So it's unlawful to supply human medicine against the veterinary prescription unless it's prescribed by a veterinary surgeon and they specifically state on the prescription that it's for administration under the cascade. Now, how that works, where a, um, a licensed veterinary medicine exists, then that should be the first medicine that is seen as appropriate for use in the, in the animal. Where that isn't possible, um, an existing license in veterinary medicine for another species or different condition can be considered. Where that condition isn't possible, then a licensed human medicine or EU licensed veterinary medicine can be considered. And where that uh, those conditions can't be met, then an extemporaneous or specially manufactured medicine could be considered for, you, for prescription um, for the animal. Another term I've used within this video cast is suitably qualified person. Now what that means is a person who's passed an exam approved by a body and is registered with, with such a body by the Secretary of State. Now this specific body is the Animal Medicines Training Regulatory Authority. Now the Secretary of State, they issue a code of practice for that suitably qualified person and AMTRA, so Animal Medicines Training Regulatory Authority, has the duty to ensure that it's complied with. So they really police that. 
They also set standards for the suitably qualified persons and they um, expect those standards to be met. They also supplement this, the principal legal requirements with other provisions related to personnel, sale, storage arrangements and standards of premises. Record keeping is a legal requirement where any veterinary surgeon, pharmacist or suitably qualified person sells or receives veterinary medicinal products um, intended for administration to animals whose flesh or products are intended for human consumption. Um, and that's really to have a auditable trail of what that animal has um, been exposed to before it reaches um, human consumption. So in the records, the um, specific requirements that need to be recorded are identity of the product, so the medicinal product, the date of the receipt or supply, the batch number, the quantity, the name and address of the supplier and or the recipient. If there's a written prescription, you need to record the name and address of the prescriber and keep a record of the prescription. You can keep all the documents with the required information or make a record in the private prescription book. Records can also be kept electronically if that's preferable. You must keep the records for at least five years and pharmacies that supply POMV and POMVPS must undertake an annual audit. Now that annual audit, as it sounds, must be carried out at least once a year uh, by every person who is entitled to supply veterinary products on prescription. Incoming and outgoing products must be reconciled with products currently in held in stock and any discrepancies be, should be recorded. So a, a robust system should be in place. Now labelling requirements. So where medicine is supplied by a pharmacy for use under the cascade, then it needs to have specific um, details on the dispensing label unless they already appear on the packaging. So if they appear on the packaging, they don't need to be on the dispensing label as long as that dispensing label doesn't obscure those details. So you need to have the name of the prescriber, the name and address of the owner, the name and address of the pharmacy, the identification and species of the animal, the date of supply, the expiry date of the product, dosage and administration instructions. If appropriate, you should have the storage instructions and also any warnings for the user. If there's a um, specific withdrawal period, that should be included. And there's two statements that should be on there that's um, for animal treatment only and keep out of reach of children. Now, if the medicine isn't prescribed under the cascade, the regulations don't actually specify that a dispensing label is required, but the Royal Pharmaceutical Society actually advises it's appropriate to generate dispensing labels for all veterinary medicines, particularly for individual animals such as pets. And that's just um, standard, good standard practice. It's important to note that it's unlawful, so it's actually an offence, to sell or supply unauthorised veterinary medicines, including human medicines such as GSL and P medicines, for an animal unless it takes place under the veterinary cascade. So it has to be written by, it's beyond a prescription, written by a veterinary surgeon, and it needs to have those that statement on there. Um, it even applies if veterinary surgeons tell an animal owner verbally to purchase an over-the-counter human product for, from a pharmacy. So you may find that when you're in practice in a community pharmacy, um, pet owners can come in asking for things that have been recommended to them by other pet owners or by their, their vet. Um, and if that product doesn't have a marketing authorization for use in animals, you cannot sell it to that person. The physical presence of a pharmacist is required when POMV, POMVPS and NFA VPS medicines are going to be supplied unless there has already the pharmacist has already um, authorised a transaction and the person's carrying out um, the handing out of medicine etc. They are judged to be competent to do so but are also working under, under the supervision of a pharmacist. Now Regarding pharmacovigilance, pharmacists are increasingly supplying veterinary medicines for, for animals um, and they need to note that veterinary medicines can cause adverse reactions in humans as well as animals exposed to veterinary medicines. So any suspected adverse drug reactions in humans, often associated with failure to read or adequately follow um, guidance for their products, for example, animal sprays and um, spot-ons used for ticks and, and such like, um, they can have adverse effects on humans just by application. There needs to be an adverse drug reaction scheme um, similar to the yellow card scheme for human medicines and they, those um, adverse reactions are reported back. Both animal and human adverse drug reactions should be reported. So humans who suffer any consequences of applying um, the or administering the veterinary products 
but also if the animal suffers any consequences. Um, there is there are details of the scheme and the reporting forms are available on the DEFRA website. With the increased um, availability of veterinary medicinal products through community pharmacy, it's important that we as a profession are aware of the law that regulates